You are listening to The Michael Lodge Show. Wealth, business, and taxes. Oh, yeah, and some politics. Let's get started. And good morning. This is Mike Lodge. I'm so happy that you've come to join me. Got your coffee, got your tea. You know what sounds really good? I mean, I love Dunkin' Donut coffee because I have it every single morning. But you know what I haven't had it for in a long time? I haven't had, I have not had any Dunkin' Donuts. I love donuts. I probably have not had donuts for about... You know what, I can tell you exactly, it's been five years since I've had any Dunkin' Donuts. I had my office right there in Burbank, California, next to the studios, and they had a Dunkin' Donuts. And I would drive over there, I'd sneak out. and Because you can't tell anybody you're going to get donuts, because then everybody else will want some, right? And all you want is just a few minutes of time, get away from your clients, get away from the noise, to get away from the telephone, just to have that one single loving donut. Ah, oh, the memories of Burbank, California in my office. I had a lot of a lot of perks there. <laughs> so right now I'm in uh, I'm in uh, Palm Beach, Florida. Yesterday when I got up, it was sunny skies. This morning when I get up, it's lightning, thunder and rain and it's coming down cats and dogs. Weather changes. From moment to moment here in Florida. So you never are quite sure what's going to happen. All weekend long we had that tropical storm come in. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. It was raining. Windy. Just was not very nice. It was the, one of those kind of days where you sit back and you just watch movies. Just relax. Forget about your job and your business. Those are the kind of days I like. But what I also saw was something I'm... Very unhappy about. And I think most of America is unhappy with what's going on in the media at the moment. I think we have to ask ourselves, am I getting news? Am I getting verified news? If you if you go to the Society of Journalists and you look at their code of ethics, and if you then you compare it to what you're getting out of the news, you're not getting ethical news. You're not getting truthful news. It seems what has happened is that the news agencies found out that tabloid news could make them a lot of money. So if they sat down, had a whole bunch of guests in, talked about and and uh, pushed their political agenda, and had people that supported them in their political agenda, they got the ratings. Fox did it. Fox did it for a long time. Very little news, but a whole bunch of commentary. And then you have CNN. And, and, oh, and I also saw a statement from CNN, from Trapper, or Tripper, whatever his name is, who, who, who kind of gave a threat. And the threat was, if you're a conservative, and if you supported Trump, if you're a Trump supporter, that you better watch out. Because you probably won't be able to get the job. And we have heard that there are lists being formed about people that supported Trump, and now they're on that list, and they're going to go to people's employers and tell them what kind of a person that they have hired. Now, that is not, let me tell you, that is not the media's job. The media's job, ethically, is to report the news, independent from any political organization, independent from any sponsor or advertiser. They're supposed to be independent individuals, professionals, that go out and dig. And whatever they report, they can report on what they found. And we haven't seen that. So we're talking about voter fraud over the last, over the last few days here. And... Tell me 
What news organization has gone out and dug? Independent news agencies, local television stations have done it. But when it comes to the national media, they just spout whatever they want to spout based on their political agenda because they are political activists. The whole job title has changed. Not from report, they're no longer reporters, they're tabloid individuals. They do not dig, they do not report, they do not investigate, they just state whatever they want to say. So you and I were watching these people and we're watching their so called newscasts or programs. But what do we get from it? Nothing. Zero. We seem to get more frustration than anything else. We don't have newscasters anymore. Remember when you were a kid? Maybe not. A lot of you who are listening to me didn't have, when I grew up, we just had four channels, ABC, CBS, NBC, and PBS. That was it. So every night at dinner time, you would sit down and listen to the news being reported. And when I was growing up, it was the Vietnam War. Every night, they would do a body count of how many people had passed uh, that had been killed in war that day, where they were uh, along in the in the uh, war games that they were doing, and they would report on the Vietnam, uh, the country of the Viet- of Vietnam, and and what their leaders were doing. So we got reported in the news, and sometimes it was a day delayed because of how they sent the news to the local to the uh, networks in the United States. We didn't have satellite at that time. We didn't have any of that sort of stuff. It was all done by tape and that tape had to get there very quickly because we didn't have internet. We didn't have anything like that to push it through. Drinking my my tea at the moment. But but that has that is really what happened. We knew what the news was. It was given to us in a 30-minute section, a, a session at night. And as we ate our TV dinners, sitting in front of the television watching the news, and then right after that, it would be my favorite Martian. I'm really aging myself telling you this story, but that's how life was at that time. We were We had limited news. We made our own decisions based upon what we read and what we heard and that was we were independent we were independent and that independency got us a long ways a long ways we made up our own individual minds we were not led by anybody but the danger that we are facing at the moment is that our news system is 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, and a lot of it is not news whatsoever. It's just commentary. It's analysis. It's fluff. But it's not news. When you look at the Society of Journalists' Code of Ethics, you really, as you read through it, and you see what they're supposed to be practicing as professional journalists, you find out that they're not doing any of, none of it. When we get a media that is so powerful that it can take down people, destroy their lives, topple governments, change election results, push a political agenda. 
then we are in danger. Because then they know what their power is and they know what they can do with it. Because I'm afraid that a lot of us are sheep and we follow. And we don't think independently. We don't do our own due diligence on the news. But we just follow. And it's done on the left and it's done on the right. My suggestion is don't follow because what you're doing is you're putting our country in danger. Listen to the news, analyze the news, do your own due diligence, research it, find your own conclusions. But don't allow media to force the way that you think. Napoleon Bonaparte had a, had a really good quote, and it, it applies even to this day. And he said that four hostile newspapers are more to be feared than a thousand bayonets. He knew, even at that time, that the media had power. They had so much power that they were even more dangerous than an army coming at them with bayonets drawn, ready to stab, ready to kill. We're in the same situation. We have media giants out there. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Fox News, MSNBC, CNN. And we can go on the list. But they're giants. Millions of people listen to them on a daily basis. But they, have, but they know what their power can do. And if their people within inside their organizations have a political agenda not an independent reporting process but a political agenda that drives you and me to vote in a certain way you and I are in danger because you have just lost your independence of your thinking process And when individuals on television begin to threaten certain people with their jobs. See, I have a real problem. Because Joe Biden has come out with a statement that the America needs to be unified. United. But how can you do that if you have journalists literally threatening Americans because they voted for Trump or they supported Trump. So if you only go one way, if you just go the Biden way, if you just go the social media way, if you just go Fox News, CNN, their way, then you're okay, you're safe. But if you supported Trump, now you're in danger. Don't you find that dangerous? I do. When people begin threatening other Americans to put them on a black list because they believed in somebody or something, that's bad for this country. That is not democracy. Not even close to democracy. It's billions of miles away from democracy because it's attacking our freedoms through the press. I sit here every day and I'm listening and I'm watching and I'm reading, constantly I'm reading. And I'm very pissed off at what I see in here. Yesterday, the president's press secretary was giving a giving a news conference. Anil Cavuto on Fox News decided to cut away because he literally said 
that what she was saying was not truthful. What makes him the ruler over truth? Who makes him the ruler to make to allow him to decide what is truth? That's the same as Twitter. Who censors conservatives, blocks their accounts, shuts them down for a few days because they don't feel that what that individual has said is truth. They don't know. They don't know the truth. So what Neil Cavuto did was exactly what Twitter has been doing to conservatives. And now Neil Cavuto is doing the, the same thing to the President of the United States. Totally unprofessional. Totally unethical. You see, the media doesn't get to say what truth is. What they get to do is listen and let the American people decide what is truth. The media doesn't have any responsibility to dictating to us what is truth and what is. We have the ability as Americans to decide what is truth and what is not truth. Now, the media has a responsibility of reporting the truth, or as truthful as possible, independent of any other organization or independent of any other political party. But they don't have the ability to tell us what to believe. They don't have that ability. They don't have that right. Their responsibility as journalists is to tell us what the news is, and that is it. I don't want to hear any commentary. I don't want to hear any analysis. What I want to know is what the news is. If you have an expert that can verify that that is part of the news, I want to hear from them. But I don't want to hear anything from people who will not give their identity I don't want to hear any from that because now it's fake. It's 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 nonsense. It's lies. It's wrong. And yet it happens every single day. And you and I, we just sit here and we take it and we don't think anything about it because we have become these these robots. We are sheep. We have become sheep where we just sit there and we just follow the, follow the leader, whoever's leading at that time. But we never think independently and say, is this right or is it wrong? Instead, we wait for somebody else to tell us what is right and what is wrong, what is truth and what is untruth. That is not the role of media, and it never has been. Report the damn truth. That's all that I'm asking for. And that's all that Americans want to know. We'll make up our own minds. You don't tell us what to think or who to vote for or what to believe in. That's not your duty. That's not your role in life. Follow the code of ethics of journalists. If you follow the code of ethics of of, of journalists, you will find out that you're you're doing your job damn bad. Those of you at CNN and Fox and other networks like, networks like that who declare the winner in the presidential election when you know that the states have not even certified it, I'm sorry. That's wrong. It's unethical. You didn't even allow the candidates to verify what is a legitimate joke, a legitimate vote. You didn't even allow them to do that under the law. You just jumped up and said, okay, this is the winner. You didn't even allow the process, the legal process, the constitutional process to go through. 
I think that's why so many people have left Fox within the last week. Thousands and thousands have left Fox because they have become fed up with the way that Fox News has become. They use the term fair and balanced. It's not there. If I look at the code of ethics for journalists, you're not even close to fair and balanced. Not even close. And you should be ashamed of that. And CNN, you have been away from that for a long time. You have become a political political machine with a political agenda to become a political activist and to push your political views onto the American people. It's stupid, it's idiotic, it's irresponsible, and I'm going to hold you responsible for anything bad that happens to the democracy of the American people and the demise of the Constitution of the United States who protects everybody in this country. So I'm going to be watching you, CNN. I'm going to be watching you, Fox News. And I'm going to be calling you out. I am going to challenge everything that you say. Because I don't believe in it any longer. Can you believe it? Napoleon Bullapart was afraid of the press back then. He felt that they were more dangerous than an army with bayonets pointed at him. Well, Americans, we have the same situation right now. The media is more dangerous than the Chinese army pointed at us. They have come, they have become out of con- out of control. Dangerous to America. Well, that's it for me today. I have ranted, and I ranted okay. But I just want you to understand my concern as an American about the out-of-control press and the unethical press and the, the cruelty of the press to the American people. We have let them go out of control. We have let them gain too much power. And as Americans, it's time for us to put them in check. It's up to us, America. No government's going to put them in check. But we as Americans, we can do many, many things to put the press in check. And that's what I'm going to be asking you to do over the next few podcasts. I'm going to be suggesting ways that we can get the press or get the media back online. This abuse of power of the press, not just in this country, but around the world, has got to be taken back by the American people. has to happen. If you have any comments or questions, send me a text to 818-252-5682. Again, that's 818-252-5682. If you want to know what I do for my work every day, Go to lodge, L-O-D-G-E, dash C-O dot com. Buy a couple of my books. I've got three of them on the front page. Easy read. Good good uh, Christmas stocking stuffers. Does anybody even do that anymore? I don't know. I hope they do. That's a good tradition. Again, this is Mike Lodge. Everybody, have a great day. God bless. Bye-bye. This podcast has been produced by Michael Lodge, fully focused on content. God bless you all. Bye-bye.